Just on them songs. Amen. <laughs> Long ago, I settled it all. Hallelujah and amen. That's the, that's the extra part. Bass used to sing all that. Uh, in, in, our, in our little old, little old church that uh, we everybody had their own. The altos sung the altos and the basses sung their basses. <laughs> amen. I know y'all need to hear all that. But anyway, praise God. God bless you. Praise the Lord. We want to, uh, we want to go to the Lord in prayer. This evening, ask God He will touch you and to minister to needs. We know He is our need supplier. God has answered prayer this past week, and this has been a busy, this has been a busy week, and we've had a more than norm as far as for things that's been happening and taking place. And most of you probably were. Some of you have Facebook. I don't, but some of you do, and so some of you know all of these. But uh, I'll relate them to you in case you don't. Uh, Want to uh, let you know, Brother Kenneth Medlock, he's probably going to be uh, placed in a room tomorrow. And uh, though he is doing good, his surgery was five hours, four bypasses, replaced the aorta valve, that main valve, repaired another valve. So as, the, as they related, that was probably one of the more extensive surgeries one could go through. And Brother Kenneth went through it. Amen. And the nurse related that uh, one of the things because of his age naturally takes a little bit more maybe as far as springing forth and getting back on his feet. But he's done real good comparably to the extensiveness of it. So thank the Lord for that. So do keep him in your prayers for God to continue to, uh, to minister to him. And we know the Lord's going to do so. He already has proved it to, to a great extent. Amen. Also, uh, the other one was having the heart surgery was my brother, Brother John, and uh, he had surgery this morning, went real well. He was in surgery for a little better than three hours, and uh, they've done five bypasses on, on my brother, and uh, he has uh, done just great. He, they've already got him in a room, as a matter of fact, and uh, so they took him off the ventilator and all that stuff, was eating ice this evening, so... Uh, Thank the Lord for that. So John done good. Thank you for your prayers. We appreciate that so very, very, very much. I know there's one as far as on the uh, on on the sad note as well. I know that uh, Sister Norma Keaton has lost a, a stepson. I know this is Sister Judy's stepbrother that uh, he passed away yesterday evening. It was yesterday evening, was it not? Yes, that he passed away, uh, and. Uh, some of you probably remember Carl Keaton. Uh, you, you might remember him, Mar Marlon's son. Uh, but at any rate, he passed away yesterday evening. So I uh, want to keep this family in our prayers that God would touch him to uh, intercede in, in their loss and their situation. We know that uh, he certainly was not in the best of health and was having issues. So uh, we want to uh, continue to pray, pray for this family. God's going to touch you to minister. And I, I know that uh, Becky Aldridge, she, uh, their son, Matthew, went into the hospital having breathing problems. He has the COVID, and, uh, but he is doing better today, Matthew. And that was Becky and uh, uh, Harold Aldridge's uh, son. So uh, thank the Lord for that. And, uh, well, we won't mention that, but uh, anyway... Pray for them, and also Sister Becky is going to be going to a, a specialist going to be coming to Fort Smith tomorrow. She's having bleeding in her eye and having a difficulty with her retina, and uh, so uh, we don't want her to go blind. So uh, it, it's pretty serious. So let's pray for uh, let's pray for Becky, Sister Becky, that uh, everything's going to go well tomorrow. That's tomorrow afternoon, one forty-five. It's whenever she has that appointment. So I uh, wanted to make mention to you. On, on that behalf, and uh, also wanted to mention to you that um, Sister Luan is doing good. She has no symptoms uh, from this thing, even though she has tested positive. Uh, so she's been doing doing good. So thank the Lord, thank the Lord for that. And uh, we continue to keep uh, S Sister Kathy and Brother Lonnie in our prayers for the ongoing issues we know that uh, that they deal with. But uh, I know that uh, Sister Linda Stanford, she is, uh, she is here tonight, and uh, she certainly has had a battle this week. So uh, it has really been uh, 
a blessing that she's able to be here tonight. So uh, God bless you, Sister Lynn, and good to see you here tonight. And I know you could have laid out if you wanted to, but you're here. So God bless you. Amen. Because if anybody had a reading, you did, as sick as you've been. Amen. So the Lord bless you. God just interceded, didn't he, though? Amen. And on her behalf, uh, another, a negative aspect, but we've been praying for her brother Ronnie. Ronnie Owens, is, uh, they have uh, had diagnosed and they found him that he has, does have cancer. And uh, I think it's maybe in the glands and some other areas of his body. So uh, we need to pray for Ronnie. Ronnie Owens, I, I remind you, Ronnie was so good about helping and building the church. He's already come and helped as far as uh, doing some work here even after I came back. So uh, he, he's been a great asset to this church, even though he didn't come here. So pray for Ronnie Owens that uh, God will touch him and uh, give him healing. And uh, I, I won't give you any more. Alenia, Alenia is the seven-year-old girl name that I had mentioned to you. We've got to keep her in our prayer for the ongoing situation that, uh, that she is battling with. Uh, Sister Lori Head, her mom, she needs our prayer. She says she's really having, having some heart issues. So uh, pray for Sister Lori Head's mom that God would touch and to uh, minister under her. Uh, we know the Lord certainly can do that and intercede and help her. So uh, these are some of the main ones that, I, that you were aware of, we were talking about. So I uh, wanted to mention these to you. You may have some others that you want to ask about or some others you might want to add to it this evening because we know we have those that are on our list that I did mention on our open list, but uh, we want you to uh, certainly keep these in our prayers we've been praying for and those on a regular basis that I have not mentioned, but I just want to mention these for sure because we've been praying for these and believe in God. And I thank God is blessed this week, so thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for his blessings upon us. Amen. Any other requests or any other comments in our, in our prayer time? Anyone? Okay. Yes, sister. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Monica. I got it down right here. Jackie Stanford, no cancer. <laughs> I just didn't mention. So thank you for mentioning. It's well worthwhile because I would have if I'd focused on it, but I didn't focus on it like I should have. So thank you. Good. So we just believe God just answered prayer there. Good. Amen. Any others? Okay. All right. Amen. Special unspoken requests then, lost loved ones, believing God to touch you to minister. And uh, we know the Lord is the answer. We call upon him, keeping our missionaries uh, in our prayers as always. Also praying, uh, Brother Bernie and Sister Maxine, they're, they're gone to Virginia, so they're going to be gone for, for a while. And uh, keep them in your prayers for everything, for the protections and everything with them. All right. And uh, so uh, I was thinking about Brother Bernie as far as missionary, because he actually is a missionary. And uh, even though he is, he is off the field, kind of like our, our C.L. Haston that we keep in our prayers as well. So uh, let's pray and let's believe God. Our, our nation needs our prayer. Lord Jesus, help us, Lord. Our, our nation is reeling and rocking. And uh, if you don't know what's going on, you've got your head in the sand because we are facing some serious stuff. Serious stuff. If God don't intervene and give us mercies as a nation. So uh, let's uh, just pray for our nation, for God to intercede there. But man, if, we, if there's ever a day we need salvation for a soul, boy, it is the hour and the day. So I uh, wanted to mention that for sure. Lead us in a course, would you, Sister Evans? Thank you. Yeah. Can I say something? Sure. I wasn't going to, but I was just thinking, the way you were talking about our world being in such a chaos right now, and uh, we have seen miracle after miracle done just the last little while. Yeah. If you remember, I've, I've talked about uh, three different people that have just basically God has brought back. I mean, two of them, they worked on like 40, almost 50 minutes, 45 to 48 minutes. 
Um, one of my drivers, his brother-in-law was having cancer surgery yesterday, I think it was, and uh, it was going to be very extensive. They were going to have to uh, remove skull, uh, apparently a lot of skull, put a titanium plate in. Wow. And uh, prayer, of course, people were praying. And uh, Karen, I talked to her yesterday, it's her brother, and she was very upset, you know, they were very close. But it was only in the top layer, that's all they had to remove, they didn't have to remove a whole bunch of stuff, oh, and she wow. said, it is a miracle from God, and God is working for his people. Amen. Our world is in chaos, but God is standing firm for his people. Yes, he is. And I have just seen so many things in the last few months that's just... Just know that God is still working. Amen. We don't have to fear and be afraid and worry, but God is going to take care of it all. Good. And I just, maybe a little encouragement for somebody. Praise God. You betcha. Good, good. Thank you, Sister Zelda. Good. Sister Zelda. Sister Evans. this evening if you feel like it can I'd like to stand with us and represent the Lord Let's call upon Him, church. Father God, we know that You are the answer this evening. We love You. We love You. We love You. We love You. Thank You for loving us, Lord. Thank You for Your hand extended unto us, Lord, for hearing and answering and ministry and prayer. Lord, we just know that even to even this current week, God, of all the difficulties and the problems, Lord, Father, for the sicknesses and the surgeries, Lord, Lord, we know that You are the one that has come on the scene and you've proved yourself over and over and over again. Thank you, Lord, because we know that you are our help and our present help. But we love you. Thank you for loving us, Lord. Again, Lord, you heard each name that has been given this evening, Lord. Lord, we lift our hearts and our voices to you. Let healing come, God. Those have been through surgeries, Lord. Lord, we know Brother Kenneth is not no spring chicken no more, Lord. He's no real young person, Lord. Lord, overcome this extensive surgery that he's been through, God. He needs you, Lord, in your recovery and your intercessions upon him for recovery to touch his body, God. Renew his strength, God, as only, only you can, God, to lift him up, healed totally and completely in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we believe you this evening, Lord. Lord, for each of these, Lord, Father, for my brother, complete healing there. Thank you for the good good results going on with John, God. Lord, thank you this evening, Lord, for the results we've heard in our Father and what has been said for each one, Lord, being rid of cancer for Jack and, Lord, the good report on Presley, Lord. God, thank you this evening because I know that you are, you are the answer. And we want to thank you for hearing us and, and loving us, Lord. And, God, we pray you comfort and minister, Lord, under the Keaton family. Let them feel a presence and a, Lord, a, a feeling of compassion, Lord, just to overshadow them, Lord, in the time of their loss. And to know that, God, you are that presence and that present help. And, Lord, you said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Let them be the comfort of your spirit before each of those, Lord. Lord, we yield them to you now. Lord, let your presence and your grace that is sufficient 
just be up over each one, Lord. Father, upon our prayer list, God, we pray your hand would be extended unto them, Lord. Give them healing. Give them deliverances, God. Give them your favor and your best because you are the authority, the power, and the glory. And thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for hearing us, Lord. Thank you because we know you're the answer. In your name, Jesus, touching our nation, Lord, a nation that needs you desperately, Lord. God, we pray your hand up over us, Lord. God, we pray your hand up over our missionaries at home and all. And Lord, our moms and dads, sons and daughters, God, Lord, if there's every hour that there's a need for salvation, the stirring and conviction in the hearts and in souls, Lord. Lord, it is today. Draw by your spirit. Draw by your spirit. Cleanse with your blood. Cleanse with your blood. In the name, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we bless you. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We pray. Heaven will open. The Father is good. You believe that this evening? They are, are spoken. All of heaven stands at attention. When the name of Jesus is mentioned, and He hears each word we say when we pray. Let's slip a hand up thanking Him for it. Father, we thank You. Thank you for hearing and ministering. We love you. We love you. We love you. And surrender ever and all need unto you. You're the all, the almighty God. We love you. And thank you for your precious blood and blood cleansing in Jesus' name. And all of God's children said, amen, amen, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And it's probably my lapse of my, I, I did mention Presley to you guys, didn't I? See, I didn't. <laughs> It came to my mind while I was praying, so uh, that's why I wanted to mention, but uh, Presley did get a, he got a good report, not as good a report as we was wanting, but uh, was praying that that, uh, that hematoma was going to be completely gone, but it has shrunken to a little over half the size to what it was, so we're very, very thankful for that. Amen. It was 11 by 11 by 9. It measured a 5 by 5 by 8 today. So uh, it has shrunken. So uh, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for that. So uh, amen. Because you've been, been so very faithful in uh, praying for, for Presley and asking about him. And thank you so very much. And appreciate your your faithfulness and your, and your concerns. Amen. So that's why it popped in my mind while I was praying. I think, well, I, don't know if I, even, I don't know if I even mentioned him or not, but uh, praise the Lord. You know you're going to mention them grandkids if you think about it, for sure. Amen. My goodness, life. So uh, God bless you. Thank you for your prayers and uh, for the intercessions. Amen. 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 Well, did you get your little booklet handed to you tonight? It's going to get it's going to get more and more <laughs> as we get on into this, Amen. Because uh, I don't know how many chapter eleven is going to have in it, but chapter eleven is the longest chapter, and uh, ain't no telling how long it's going to be. But you're going to notice really on the surface uh, that there is also more of uh, the uh, input. Uh, that is given for each of the verses too because there's a lot more as far as explanation that needs to try to be given. So we, we do the best or tr our best we can to try to summarize it because it's a lot of information out there regarding all of this. So we try to summarize this to where you'll, you'll get the pertinent information that is valued and that it'll be that be explanatory so I uh, wanted to just make that little brief mention about it. Uh, but we're going into chapter number what? Eight. Chapter number 8, Daniel chapter 8. Remember, Daniel means God is my judge. And I'm, I'm glad he is the judge. Oh, Lord, 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 amen. Thank God for his blessings and uh, 
that God knows all knows all about it. But we'll be moving into Daniel chapter number eight tonight, and we're probably going to be be doing as we have in the past, but maybe even more so even now. But I'm I'm going to be identifying more with my notes that I handed to you and give you going through this, and I, I hope you don't mind me doing that. And if we need to do more digressing about that, then we'll do that. That's the reason why uh, uh, Brother Donald is not here as well. Brother Donald Obar is because of uh, Carl Keaton, you know, his passing away, because that, that's direct uh, to their families, so uh, his wife, family, and stuff. So just wanted to kind of make mention of that to you as well. So Daniel chapter number 8, are you ready? Yes. Are you sure? <laughs> Let's pray. Father God, we love you. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you because of your love and, Lord, because of your grace that we know is sufficient. And thank you for the compassions extended unto us. We ask you now, Lord, let your anointing rest up over this vessel and the ministry of your word. Each one in the sound of our voice, Lord. That is each one in the sound of our voice, Lord, by the way of live stream. And we want to say, Lord, thank you to all you that are by the way of live stream. Some of you are so very faithful and consistent in watching and observing in our services, each of our services, and you make comments. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Father, we just want to ask your blessings upon them and upon each of us as well here in this sanctuary in the giving and the receiving of your blessed and holy word. And we want to thank you now for the precious blood that makes it all possible in your name, Jesus. We give you praise. And all of God's children said, Amen, Amen, Amen. We're looking in Daniel chapter number 8. As we begin in Daniel chapter number 8, you'll see as far as in the heading, this is uh, Daniel's vision of the realm and the he-goat. Now, it's going to be looking in this first portion as far as the time of the vision, but I want to bring this to your, to your understanding. There's going to be a lot of repeating in this as we go through uh, chapter 8, 9, and 11. There's going to be more clarifications in the things that we share even from chapter 7 into this chapter 8 and going on. But it also where we see that Daniel is really what we classify as a complicated book to understand in the last six chapters uh, that it gives you an understanding whenever we are children of God and our minds are open to receive the spirit of instruction of what His Word says. Remember, a natural man cannot discern the thing of a spiritual man could be being spiritually discerned. I believe that. Thank God for it. And so let's continue then. So this is the time of the vision. We're looking here at Daniel then. In verse number 1, it says it's in the third the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar. Remember us talking about Belshazzar and his kingdom, that the vision appeared unto him, Daniel, and uh, after that which appeared unto him at the first when it had taken place. So the phrase, in the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, it means that this vision was given some two years, uh, some two years after the vision uh, of chapter 7 and chapter 8 preceded chapter number 6. So in your mindset, as you think about the study of Daniel, it gives a little bit more of an understanding. Why, well, why is it he's talking about the vision of Belshazzar now whenever he's not even, even in the picture? But you got to realize he has given us the vision, he has given us the dream, and then bringing forth the interpretations of them even at a later time than when they were given in his clarification. So just want to make that little brief explanation. Verse number 2, Daniel says, And I saw in a vision, and it came to pass when I saw that I was at Shushan in the palace, which is in the province of Elam. Elam is, uh, Elam is at, at the foot of the, uh, really, they call it the highlands of Iran. But it is in that geographical area is where that uh, at Daniel is at this time whenever he is uh, in, the, uh, in the palace in the kingship of uh, Belshazzar. So just thought I'd reach for what Elam means. And then also when he saw in a vision, and I was by the river of uh, uh, 
and I really can't even pronounce that, but really it's the Tigris River, and you can pronounce that, but the, the river uh, Ulei or whatever it may be is the Tigris River. And uh, Shushan, which is in your print out there, was the chief city of Persia. This is all in that geographical area that we had just uh, related to you. So let's move on then into verse number three. This is moving the area as far as the difference in the, in the explanation of what he saw in the realm and also uh, what it represents and what it is. The realm is Media Persia, verse number three. Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram, which is talking about the Tigris River, which had two horns, and the two horns were high. Both one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. In our printout, as you see, just follow with me, that there's a ram which had these two horns. This symbolizes the Media Persian Empire, Medio Persian. Two of them, okay? Ruled by two kings, Darius of the Medes and Cyrus of the Persia, of Persia. And the two horns were high, which speaks of their power. The phrase, but one was higher than the other, and the higher one came up last. This is given the explanation where that Persia was developed after the Media Empire became stronger than the two. It was the one that was stronger than those two. It was stronger than the media empire. So in verse number four, and Daniel says, And I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward, and so that no beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand. But he did according to his will, and he became great. This is talking about, as you see in your printout, the realm. This is being symbolic of the Medes and the Persians' empire. He says, and as I saw the realm that was pushing, pushing westward, which is talking about he is going toward Babylon to take Babylon, to conquer it. Then he goes northward, which is referring to Lydia, while southward is referring to Egypt, and he's going to be overcoming these nations when we're talking about the two together. But there's going to be something that's going to be taking place. Look into verse number 5. This is going to be giving you the interpretation and the understanding of the he-goat. Who is the he-goat? The he goat uh, is Greece uh, or Grecia. Okay? In verse number five, am I going too fast? Are we doing okay? Okay? Everybody says amen. amen. And as I was considering, behold, and he goat came from the west uh, on the face of the whole earth, uh, and he touched not the ground, uh, and the he goat had a notable horn uh, between his eyes. This is very interesting. All of this is, it may not be, I, it is, you would be here. This is so intriguing about this. History that has already happened, this was given before that history happened, gave it, I mean, precisely, and now we're reading about it, and now we're even seeing about some of the things that's going to be happening just like that in futuristic means. So in the printout, is in Nebuchadnezzar's dream, he gives us a Grecian empire, which is represented by the belly and the thighs of brass. But in Daniel's first vision in chapter 7, the Grecian empire was represented by leopard with four wings that also had four heads. This symbolizes his empire, and in his vision is symbolized as an he-goat. Now, the phrase and touch not the ground, it's talking about the speed, it's talking about Alexander the Great, talking about his conquest over the nations. In 13 years, he conquered the whole known world. Awesome, something else. The notable horn refers to its first king, which was Alexander the Great. He was some type military guy at such a young age, starting out at 19. And then the way he died, it just blows your mind in a sense. But yet, it is showing that God showing Daniel what's going to be happening when it comes to Alexander the Great and the Grecian Empire. So there's a war that's about to be taking place. Media Persia and Greece, or Grecia. 
there's going to be the battle that's going on. Verse number 6. And he came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river, and ran unto him in the fury of his power. And remember, it's talking about immediate Persia with the ram that had the two horns there. The fury of his power is portraying the speed of the conquest or the ferociousness of the attack and also the military strategy that completely overwhelmed the larger forces of the Medes and the Persians of what Alexander the Great done. Can you just see this in a... And when you look in a, in a new segment that would give the truth of it, this would be some phenomenal battle that would be portrayed on the picture screen of what was taking place at that period of time. In verse number 7, And I saw him come close unto the ram, talking about Greece or Alexander the Great, and he was moved with collar, collar against him. And he smote the ram and brake his two horns, and there was no power in the ram to stand before him. But he cast him down to the ground and stumped upon him. And there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. This is talking about from the previous verse of the strength and the power that was in the hand of Alexander the Great. Matter of fact, the word, the word collar, collar may not be pronouncing it correctly, but you know the word. It is talking about becoming bitter. He was very ferocious. He was very bitter toward these two empires. Alexander had but one thing in mind, and that was to conquer and to conquer all that would try to stand in his way of being emperor and controller of the then known world. Why he was so angry, I don't really know, but it was that anger that he put forth them, and these, the Media and Persian empires, were recipients of his anger, and he conquested up over that empire that was great at that time, but he overcame them. Awesome. Something else when we look at it. Verse number 8. Now let's look at the four horns. Four horns is related to the Grecian empire that is coming forth from Alexander the Great. You're aware of them, but let's look at them, and we'll look more at the detail maybe a little bit later on. Uh, but verse number 8, the four horns, it says, Therefore the he-goat, which is talking about Alexander the Great, the Grecian Empire, waxed very great. And when he was strong, the great horn was broken, which is talking about Alexander the Great being the one that was in control. And for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. When he was strong, the great horn was broken, which is talking about the untimely death of Alexander the Great himself. That was in the year 323 B.C. This was at the very apex of his strength. He was only 32 years of age whenever he died. And for that, there came up the four noble ones, those four notable horns that came up, there was four toward the four winds of heaven. It's talking about his kingdom that is going to be split into four different parts upon his death. And I, I noted all those down. I've got those generals' names down there but uh, and the countries, but I don't want to give that right now. I want to wait and give that. We'll go a little bit more in depth in that just a little bit further on. Okay? So... Uh, this is giving where the conquest was uh, whenever Alexander the Great came in and his death, uh, all in that verse of Scripture. So, so then we're going to move on. We're going to move from the time that was just a couple hundred years from Daniel after he died, that these things happened we've just given you. Now we're going to move many, many, many years down the road. We're going to deal with the little horn which is the Antichrist. Everybody still with me now? All right? Okay. Verse number 9. And out of one of them came forth a little horn. Out of one of them, which one? Out of one of the four horns is what it's talking about. Out of one of the four horns came forth the little horn, which waxed exceedingly great. Look what it says. Toward the south, toward the east, and toward the pleasant land. 
Well, we know the place last talking about Israel, but let's look in the, uh, in the handout what it says. Um, one of them came forth as a little horn, which is talking about the future Antichrist, uh, which is coming out of one of these uh, four divisions, as I spoke to you of, talking about the four horns uh, of the old Grecian Empire of those four kingdoms. Uh, toward the south, talking about Egypt. Toward the east, talking about Syria, Iraq, and Iran. All three compiled into the east. Uh, then toward the pleasant land, which is talking about Israel. Uh, it is this area that the Antichrist uh, is going to make uh, his world domination. This is where his significance uh, is going to come on surface uh, in the world area and the play of the world. This is when uh, it's going to be really a lot of the dominations that is going to be broadcasted and given them in the, uh, in the news uh, and the things that is going to be said during that period of time. This is still future, but it ain't very far, I believe, down the road. And so it's just something that is very, very, very interesting. But in verse number 10, still talking about the little horn. And he waxed great, even to the host of heaven. And it cast down some of the host, talking about the Antichrist and his strength and his power and what he was doing, and of the stars to the ground. And he stomped, or he stamped upon them. I use the old Louisiana language, farm language, stomped. But anyway, and it waxed great, even to the host of heaven. It's talking about the controlling factor, domination over all that he's going to be having. I'm talking about the little horn, which is the Antichrist. He's, during this time, he's going to be breaking his seven-year covenant with Israel, which Daniel is going to give us in detail there in the next chapter in that 27th verse. So we'll be looking at that in detail. And actually, he's going to be declaring war on Israel. He's going to be seeking to destroy Israel. And this is uh, really symbolized by that phrase that is in that verse of Scripture where it says, and it, which is talking about the little horn, cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. This is referring to Israel primary, primarily, which is going to be defeated at that time. And that, as we're aware of, still is yet future. But again, I'll reiterate, uh, I do not believe it's far futuristic, but it is still future, but we do not know, but we do know for the things that are unfolding and taking place uh, that we know or are aware, God said we can see by the signs of the times uh, of things that are happening and taking place. Uh, if this comes up on people by surprise, it's because they haven't been reading the Word of God and listening to the Spirit of God. Thank you. I like that. Amen. Uh, look in verse number 11. Amen. Uh, yea, or yes, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. Here's talking about how the Antichrist is going to be taking his authority up over the high priest of Israel there in Jerusalem. These verses actually speak of the war which is going to be instituted by the Antichrist when he breaks his seven year, which is going to be the mid year of that seven year tribulation period that this is going to be happening. He's going to break that covenant with Israel. He's going to be invading Israel, which is the pleasant land. He's going to defeat Israel. He's going to stop the daily sacrifice, as we talked about there in Revelations, that they're going to start that sacrifice up again when they rebuild that temple. But he's going to stop that. And whenever all of that has been reinstituted after the lapse of time, approximately uh, 2,000 years, and we're already beyond that 2,000 years. This tells us that the Jewish temple is going to be rebuilt. It is going to happen. It is reality, and I'm telling you, it just seems like it's on the horizon of what we're looking at. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking too fast. Tell me if I am. Are, are you? Okay, great. Praise the Lord. If anybody complains there in, in live stream, let me know, Sister Monica. All right, praise the Lord. Verse number 12. And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. And it cast down the truth to the ground. And it practiced and it prospered. When it's talking about by reason 
of transgression. It's talking about the Antichrist that is going to be breaking, as we just related, his seven-year covenant with Israel. He will then stop the daily sacrifice. And actually, because of where that the Antichrist is going to be in his world domination and the other nations are beginning to give him their support into what he's doing, the world's going to applaud him in what he's going to be doing in Israel. They're actually going to be thinking that the Antichrist is what he said he was, and he's going to be influencing the world, the people as a whole. Because remember, the church is gone. Even though there's going to be people that's going to be saved during a seven-year period, that they're going to be thinking, yes, this man is doing exactly what he said he's going to do. Look at that man. Look at what kind of power. Look at what kind of prestige that God has got. Look how smart that man is in all the things that he has done. And so the world is going to applaud him in what he's doing. Does that make sense? Look in verse number 13. Then I heard one saint speaking. And another saint said unto that certain saint uh, which spake. I like the way Daniel talking about that. <laughs> How long shall be the vision? Do you believe conversations go on in heaven? This is in heaven, okay? Concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host uh, to be trodden underfoot. Uh, these are as related to you saints that are in heaven, uh, that is speaking, and the sanctuary here is talking about, no doubt, must be the rebuilt temple there in Jerusalem. The host is going to be trodden underfoot. It's talking about the worshipers that are there, that are yielding and accepted God and wanting to follow Jehovah God, the Lord Jesus Christ. This, pardon me, this is when the Antichrist is going to invade Israel in the middle of the seven-year tribulation period, as we related to you, you can follow through in chapter 9, verse 27. We'll go in detail in that verse in the next chapter. Verse number 14. And he said unto me, Under 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. It's so amazing at the accuracy that God gave Daniel. I want you to notice this in the handout, okay? This verse makes reference to 2,300 evenings and mornings, okay? Cutting that in half is 1,150, okay? Now look at this. In Daniel's day, the years were counted as 360 days long. Instead, we understand and we know our present method of one year is 360 five days. Notice this. The three years, two months, and ten days are the whole and actual length of the doing away of the daily sacrifice in the temple. When they start back to offering up those sacrifices, starting out in that seven-year tribulation period after the church has been gone for a period of time. They are offered again by the Jews when the sanctuary is cleansed. You'll read this in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 15 and 16, when Jesus talks about the abominations of desolations that is mentioned. And Daniel is going to mention those in more detail as we move over a little bit further into the book of the abominations of the desolations and have more of a detail in understanding what that is. Is that okay? All right? Okay. You ready to continue on? All right. Now, when we talk about here, we're going to move into uh, an interpretation of what the, the, uh, the angelic interpret interpreters are going to be given to Daniel. So here is the explanation that is coming forth. Verse number 15. And it came to pass when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning, then, behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. Actually, it is believed that this, no doubt, is Gabriel, who is standing in the presence of Almighty God Himself. Verse 16, And I heard a man's voice between the banks of, 
of the Tigris River, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. It is to make Daniel understand what he has saw because he was confused and he did not have a clear understanding of what he saw, which is totally understandable. Can we hear a good amen? Look at the time that he's talking about of the fulfillment of it. Verse 17. So he came near where I stood. And when he came, I was afraid. In other words, coming from the majesticness and the appearance of Almighty God, here is, we believe Gabriel is coming right with Daniel. There where he is. Whew. It's, man, when you start thinking about the majesticness and, and God bringing His presence right in the middle or in the, in the very midst of a fleshly individual, it just, man, it's just almost mind-boggling. But that's what's going to happen, and He is going to come back to earth one day. He said, and when He came, I was afraid. And I fell upon my face. I think I would have too, wouldn't you? But he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. For at the time of the end shall be the vision. Is talking about the end time. The very days in which we even now live, extending into our immediate future. Did you understand what I just told you in that handout? I believe that with all my heart. I believe it. I may not see it in my lifetime. You may not see it in your lifetime. But I believe there's a strong possibility that we could. Can I hear an amen? Verse 18. Now, as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground. But he touched me and he set me upright. Daniel senses his tremendous unworthiness naturally, especially in the presence of Gabriel and knowing the presence of, of, of Almighty, of the Shekinah presence that is there in the midst. Verse 19, and he said, Behold, this is talk, Gabriel is saying, I will make you know what shall be in the last end of the ending nation. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. What shall be in the last end of the indignation? This is God's judicial wrath against Israel. This is concerning God's past, present, and future. Everything is going to be summed up. We think about seven years, but this has been going on since the fall in the garden. It's all going to be summarized at that seven-year end time, okay? Which is pretty astronomical when you think about it. And it says, the indignation spoken of here is concerning the last end of the last days of that great tribulation which we just alluded to you. And it talks about here in verse number 20. Now he's giving some interpretation here as well. The realm, Media, Persia. The realm which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia. He's explaining that. Daniel served in these empires as well for a number of years before his death. Then verse 21, the he-goat, Grisha, which is Greece. The rough goat is the king of Grisha. And the great horn between the, the eyes of the verse king, which is talking about Alexander the Great, is that great horn. Then it's talking about the four horns. What are these four horns? These four horns are Greece, Turkey, Syria, and Egypt. I'll give you a little bit of explanation in this verse number 22. Verse number 22, it says, Now, that being broken, whereas four stood up for it, four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his power. In other words, here's what he said. There's going to be four kingdoms that's going to rise up out of the kingdom of Greece, out of Alexander.